Great. Uh, so yeah, so it's um, a, a very packed agenda today. So I want to ask all speakers and questioners to try and stick the time as much as possible, please. Um, I would just like to make a quick introduction, quick introduction to my colleague Louisa Tomkin, uh, who's on the call. Uh, a lot of you probably remember that uh, Amanda Kanner uh, administered this uh, this group for us. Uh, it's now Louisa. So if there's anything about joining the group or Anything you want to get out to the members, then please let Louisa know and she'll be happy to help you out. Uh, in terms of Zoom etiquette, please, if you could, we're not going to do introductions, we haven't got time, but if you want to say anything, please just introduce yourself and your organisation uh, as you speak. Um, you can change your name on the display, which is really helpful if you change it to your name and your organisation, uh, three dots and then rename. And um, because there's at least two screens full of people here, uh, I might not be able to see you if you physically wave to raise a point. So instead, if you could uh, use the, the electronic hand as much as possible, and that on Zoom is under reactions. I think reactions raise hand. Uh, all right. Uh, and um, yeah, so this is your meeting. We encourage interaction as much as possible. There will be some interactive breakout sessions later on, going through some of the stuff that we talked about today. I guess I have a rather packed and fascinating agenda. So we're going to be welcoming uh, Mark Newton to give a quick introduction. Uh, and then uh, Marie Snelling, hopefully we'll be able to get into the meeting. And then uh, she'll be giving an introduction to the broad uh, strategic intentions and ambitions. From Apologies for jumping in because I can't work out how to raise my hand. Um, Marie Snelling is trying to actually join the call and for whatever reason is not able to connect. Um, so I've just sent a message to Sub. I don't know if we can help Marie with that at all. I can't think of any reason why she couldn't join because uh, most other people seem to be able to get in okay. Uh, if there was a more wide problem, I would normally have a flood of emails by now saying, help, help, I can't get in. Uh, and I haven't got that. We'll just, let, we'll just let Marie keep trying for a while. Uh, hopefully, we'll be hearing from Marie, uh, and then after that, uh, we'll be hearing about uh, community link officers through James Painter. Then we'll hear from uh, various members of the library and communities team, uh, and then uh, we'll be hearing from Lynn Martin. Uh, Nelly said time is involved reaction, but that's not true anymore, Lynn, is it? Uh, Lynn Martin of Prosper Communities, and then we'll have, hopefully, if everything goes okay, we'll have a bit of a chance for updates from anybody else, but we do need to finish promptly at 1130 so I'm going to shut up now and hand over to uh, Mark Newton. Mark, over to you. Uh, thanks, Jason, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here uh, on this uh, Charities Forum. I, I won't talk very long because I know time is precious. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm the Cabinet Member at Surrey for uh, Customer Communities, uh, of which the, the charity sector sits under. So it's great to be here today. Um, I know, I think after... The last couple of years with COVID, we were all hoping we would uh, take a bit of a rest and a back seat. And of course, as times will have it, it looks like it's going to be even more challenging going forward. And I think from a Surrey perspective, we're very lucky to have such a strong charity sector, which uh, helps out uh, our communities. Um, we can't do it all alone uh, as a county or as or even the borough and districts, and we rely heavily on yourselves, as, as you well know. Um, so, I mean, thank you for the good work that you do do um, and it's great that this forum has continued uh, one of the good things that's come out of covid is to have this type of forum where we can all get together uh, talk about problems uh, needs how we can resolve and how we can work together to uh, to make our mean? residents lives better um, so i'm not going to steal marie's thunder but i hope you enjoy what you're going to hear today we've got some good initiatives coming forward from uh, our service teams i think james is going to go through the link officers um, and uh, one final thing I will say is I met Jason, or Jason kindly facilitated last year some sessions, meeting some of you in person, which was fantastic. Be more than happy to do that again. It's really great to see and, and to speak to some of you face to face, or even come and visit you in situ wherever you are. So just just let me know if that's viable, or you'd like me to do that. I'd certainly would because it's great to meet you and actually uh, find out what's going on. Uh, one very small thing I will say is I'm sure some of you. 
uh, realised we had a few problems last week with uh, the jobs advertising side of life uh, that we do on your behalf. Uh, we have reinstated that. Um, it is going to be under review and we're going to work with Jason and some of you um, going forward to make sure that we get that right and can still offer you that service which again is incredibly important so i'll let everyone carry on i'm going to dip out uh, about half past 10 but i'll be coming back in about 11 o'clock so thanks jason brilliant thanks mark uh, this is the point in the agenda that we would uh, be ideally handing over to marie uh, marie yeah. still hasn't managed to get in jason so... do you want me to deep dive into my bit to save time and then marie could do some headline messages She's just logging on again, so she'll probably yeah. be about five minutes, I think. That's pretty much what I was going to say, James. Sorry. So we're, we're now going to have, well, you can introduce yourself then, James, can you? Oh, hi, everybody. So I'm James Penny, I'm the partnership manager at the County Council. Um, I've got 10 minutes to rattle through some slides to talk to you about our new uh, community link officers, which we're really excited about. So I'll just share my screen and then do a short presentation and just check that you can see it. Uh, People can see that, okay. So, um, firstly, yeah, really excited about a new approach to going out and engaging with communities. Um, this really responding to what communities have told us, what residents said to us, that they want us to be more approachable um, out there and speak and engaging with people, um, be joined up more with our partners um, in terms of our approaches, and really, that enablement piece around supporting communities to live on their ambitions, not the county council's ambitions. So really us in that supporting that enablement role and also providing access to funds to help that as well. Um, on the uh, right of the screen to see some of the tools that we've now got to help and support that approach. So uh, community funds, we exciting, we've got your fund, Surrey. Uh, my colleague, Nikki Tag has been to talk to you, but we've got that. 100 million pounds really starting to make a difference for communities. Um, I think we've got upwards of sort of 30 million pounds worth of applications, ideas coming forward um, towards that fund um, over the last um, 18 months. Um, so that's really um, started to drive. Um, also members have access to funding within the County Council, 5,000 pounds, and really pulling other funding from other institutions as well um, to support community initiatives. I think that's the key thing. It's about the community coming forward with the ideas and then us providing that support. I'm um, really exciting. We've got some place focused roles now working in the community. So um, community link officers I'll talk about today. Also we've got local area coordinators as well. I know Sarah Bogunovic is on the um, call as well um, today. And then also trying to harness um, the new technologies, new tools that we have um, within Surrey. So using that data, that insight that we've got working with our teams there, new social media, um, new tools to engage. <laughs> And um, just make it happen, um, slide pack is just part of that. But on your approach of going out there and engaging, and really exciting, and Sue's gonna talk about libraries as well, but how we can harness that, use libraries as a hub um, within our communities. A bit more about the community link role. Uh, so these are gonna work at a very local level. Um, so you can see what we're trying to do is that they act as the link, as the bridge, between the county council and the local community and really bringing all those um, supporting roles together and really helping a resident to navigate into the county council. I think we realize it can be a confusing organization, but we want to um, demystify that and support people to engage on their own terms. So you see, what we want is that link officer to act as a bridge into the county council liaising and working with all those different key elements um, within communities um, at a locality level. A bit more on what they'll be doing. So um, been in post now for uh, six weeks and we've got the link officers just going out and starting to engage and work within uh, communities. So going out and talking with councillors, um, going out into neighbourhoods, um, fact finding, building up that that knowledge, that understanding of um, the localities that we're focused on and really building that back into the organisation. Um, meeting people, I think that's really important. Um, what really is key is that we're trying to get out into communities. It's not a desk-based role. And we've 
deliberately recruited people into um, these roles who are good, as you say, going out and talking with people. Um, that's not something that you can necessarily book learn, but we want everybody in these roles to be approachable, that you know them, that you can go to them and you have confidence to contact them. Um, the community link roles are focused on the key 21 health and wellbeing neighbourhoods. So while, while we're self-organising on a district and borough basis, it's those key neighbours that will be our principal areas of focus. And we're trying to deliver at that more granular, that locality level. Um, and also importantly, our work is going to be supplemented by our events team as well. So we've got um, colleagues in, in the small team that will be supporting us in really going out there, joining in and engaging with communities on their terms. Um, so this is just a bit of a busy slide, just shows some of the approach um, that we've taken forward um, starting um, this year. So really from the left, you can see that we're trying to build up that understanding of the local area, make sure that we are evidence-based in terms of um, our approach, how we build up that knowledge of localities. It's not first come, first serve, but alongside data, we want that rich sort of contextual picture by going out there and talking. I think that's important. Um, then we want to go out there, join up, engage, um, have that dialogue with communities, um, be valued partner. And that's just what we're starting on those steps now. And then um, we want to build that back into then delivering on um, the needs of neighbourhoods, what residents are communicating to us and supporting communities to deliver on their ambitions. So you see it's a sort of virtuous uh, cycle and that's really what we're focused on. Uh, joining in this is really exciting, really key. Uh, so with the events team, we're going out there and getting out and talking to people. Uh, so we've got some Make It Happen branded um, uh, gazebos, products, um, and just, yeah, having conversations. Some of the feedback we've got is that people actually enjoy speaking to um, Coyston County Council. Uh, so we're getting out there. We've got the Book and Village Days, one example there. I think we're going to Cranley on uh, tomorrow uh, to talk to people. Um, on the high street um, and lots of events planned over the summer. Um, as part of that, we've got three events where we're, we're trying to have a more focused engagement, trying to understand um, communities' needs. So uh, one of those will be at Surrey Pride uh, toward the end of August in Camberley. Also, we'll be doing one of those Let's Talk events um, in the Old Dean in early September as well. And then we have to bring back some of that learning, share that practice um, with the forum as we take it forward. It is an iterative process, so your feedback, um, your help, your support is really going to be key to this. Um, again, I'll share this slide, don't have to go through this, but this is just the names of uh, my colleagues who've joined the County Council to work and support in this role. And there's just the uh, key neighbourhoods um, that people have been assigned. Um, so you should see the presence, should be people, um, do contact us. Um, and we will come out, talk and engage. I think that's really important. Uh, another slide just shows um, people's faces. We've got a dedicated email address that we, we monitor every day. So do use that to contact us and we'll come out, we'll engage with you and we'll talk with you. And you can see um, some of my colleagues there. And again, uh, more of my colleagues. Um, so we've got um, a colleague for each borough and district area. Uh, what I think the other thing just to emphasise, this is really important, is that um, the community link officers and also some other sorry, funded roles such as local area coordinators, we're not seeking to supplant any of the really valuable work that's going on within communities. We're really seeking to add value and play a supporting role. And you can see that slide there just encapsulates on what we're seeking to do. So I think the local area coordination, that's around that confidence capacity working with communities and individuals into um, people's front rooms at that, that very granular level and really with the um, community link officers it's really working with communities by acting as a by acting as a link as a bridge back into the county council so hopefully um the county council won't feel remote we will feel approachable and people will know who to go to And then just some of the focus for the rest of this year. So as I said, we'll be getting out there, engaging with communities. We've got 11 Let's Talk events uh, planned where we'll go out and, and talk to people about their ambitions, um, their requirements, and then see how we can work with partners and with colleagues to deliver on that. 
Uh, we're going out um, into high streets um, throughout the suburb with this Make It Happen branding, use of uh, social media, um, but also just isn't getting out there and talking with people. Um, we'll be trying to link and provide information about initiatives from the County Council and wider um, so that residents communities can act upon that. And again, building on insights. So working with our uh, insight team and we're looking to some of the census data that will be coming through in the next year and how we can share that and, and, and work and use that. Um, I think I may have gone over slightly. I apologise, but I'll stop sharing. And if there's time for questions, I'm very happy to answer any. Great. Uh, thanks, James. And that was, that was 10 minutes. Marvellous. Brilliant. Thank you. Um, so any questions or comments from James before we move back up the agenda to Marie? Uh, Sally. Hi, James. Um, I'm just wondering whether it would be possible for you to put the slide back up, which gives the names of the officers that are working in each of the areas. Yes, I'll go for that now. Sorry, I did rather go through that at pace. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. We will, of course, share the slides after the meeting as well, of course. Sally, was there a question coming from that or did you just want to see the slides again? No, there's no question. It was just I wanted to know the name so I could get in touch. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks, Sally. Uh, Kate, you and Smith. Hi, yes, at the beginning, um, James, you talked about community funds and, and sort of joining them up. And I, I wasn't quite clear what that meant from a either a community point of view or a charity, yeah, and or a charity point of view. What what what's yes, yeah, kind of why do we need to know that? What, what is there something we need to do differently as a result? No, I think just community funds is one of those enablement tools. So I think with your fund, Surrey, um, that's ambition that communities can access that monies and it can help to deliver on their ambitions. I think we'd always hope that we'd have the link offices in place at the same time that we'd have Your Fund Surrey. We were able to launch Your Fund Surrey um, earlier than we had the link offices in on the ground, but really we want the link offices to be able to use um, a Your Fund Surrey access to funds or just their awareness of knowing other community funding that might be available to draw on that to help communities um, uh, put applications forward um, and to fund projects within their localities. So I think that that's all that um, I was seeking to say there. I see you weren't, because you mentioned member allocations. I, I, I thought maybe you meant they were changing or something, they're not. No, the only thing we're trying to do is we're always working to try and make the process easier for applicants um, with members, with their monies, um, yeah, I think with Mark, we're, we're just trying to spread some awareness around those that, that that's available. Um, it's about and make the bottling it together, more. isn't it? So that everybody's aware of all of the funding. I think at, the, at times it's felt that there's different pots of money everywhere and it's really making it as clear as possible for communities what's available to them, isn't it, James? That's what we're trying to do. Thank you. Great, thanks, Kate. Should I stop uh, sharing, Sally? Are you okay? Have you got it? Yeah, if you stop sharing, James, we'd like to say we'll share the slides afterwards as well, of course. No, that's um, great. Thank you. Lovely. Uh, any other questions before I chip one in? No? Um, James, I was, I was really interested in the bit about the local group mapping and the GIS stuff. Can you tell us just a little bit more about that? Because uh, the reason for that is one of the things that we hear a lot from um, local authority and health partners is that we don't know which groups are out there doing what. And as we've said a million times before, it's, it's a massive, massive job, potentially 10,000 organisations out there. So, so can you tell me a bit more about that work? So some of the work we're doing is around um, data with our colleague Russ Borner in the team. And that's just around um, how we can use data and insight to, to share some of that information in terms of getting that out to communities. So I think we, we hold a lot of information, but we're not always that good at providing it in um, ways that are easy to interrogate uh, and of use to communities. So um, we're developing some new data products that can be used in community settings. So um, sort of World Cafe approaches different ways that we could use it. And that will inform some of the sort of events and deliveries and conversations that we want to have um, with communities. And again, it'd be really great to work with you. I think the other thing is that we know all communities all um, 
localities are different. So in terms of the approach, we want to tailor that to um, the specific community. So it won't be one uh, sort of set product that we, we've used. I think the other thing that we're trying to do is, yeah, to really um, do some work around the stakeholder mapping, but recognise that there is a huge amount of existing data out there, um, but how as the link officers, um, we can get the information out to um, residents, to stakeholders that they might be able to utilise um, in the best way. So um, we're just at the start of that and developing some of the um, tools around that. But again, I'm very happy to come back and, and share some of our, our thinking, how that approach takes, takes root. I think what we'd like to do is just find a way that um, we can get information out to, to residents, to stakeholders in the coming months on key information coming out from the County Council or initiatives that people can act on. Uh, so we're working with CJ and other colleagues around that at the moment. Great. Thanks, James. I've got just by one time for another two quick questions. Then. So that'll be Kate Scrivens, then Eloise. Thank you. Hi, James. It's a practical question, really. For those of us who um, will be very interested in meeting these new people, is there a forum? What's the best way practically, rather than us all inundating them with, with emails individually? Uh, will they be meeting as a group? And is there a way that we could put in some questions or have a session with them as a group to sort of make the process a bit more efficient? Yeah, no, that's really um, helpful. So really with the post, I want people out on the ground in the localities, but what we do is we come together every um, Wednesday and have a physical meeting and have updates. So if you did want to attend one of our team sessions on a Wednesday, you'd be very welcome. If you wanted to talk to um, everybody on block, as it were, yeah, we'd be very happy to arrange that. And um, that's why we put that, got that community's shared email address. So um, it's just easier if you want to talk or access to all the link officers, we can facilitate that. That's no problem at all. Thanks, Kate. Uh, Eloise? Hi there. Um, uh, sorry, I'm one of the naughty late people, so I probably missed the uh, critical bit that answers this question. But um, I, I was just noticing, uh, somehow caught up yesterday, that Mole Valley has done away with its um, community, small community grants, which is quite useful for, you know, little projects and bits and bobs that we're doing with, with, with partners and so on. And, I, and what I've missed in, this, in the presentation is whether there's, these community link officers have got any little pots of money that they can make sort of, you know, nice little, I don't know, environmental projects or whatever happened um, uh, together in, in the absence of any money from the local authority. Uh, not presently. Um, we've got, working with the members, and that was one of the ideas around whether we can work with members around access to their member funds. There's your fund, which is obviously the capital monies, which is for higher amounts. Um, we are looking at also opportunities for um, revenue funds within the health and wellbeing key neighbourhoods. So there may be announcements that come online about that in um, the next few months. But yeah, if, if, if anything, we'll share that in coming months. But there's, there's no specific funding allocated to the link officers that will fit that at that at that point, Louise. Lovely, thank you. Uh, we do have to move on. I'll, I'll just make a couple of quick points before I do. Chair's privilege, uh, James. And um, we're more than happy to do the equivalent of a sorry charities for a meeting per link officer at some point in, in the future, if that would be useful. Uh, and the second thing is, I really suggest that the team have a conversation with Amy Clark at Surrey Wildlife Trust because the work that they're doing to redefine how they engage communities is jaw dropping. And there's probably a few things you can pick up about doing it in a very different way. Uh, definitely worth the conversation. Uh, and I'll introduce you if you wish. Um, so thank you for that, James. Thanks for your time. Um, you'll be able to contact James for, for more details. And there was the email address in the presentation to contact the Link Officers Work Team. Uh, it looks like Marie has beaten the technology into submission. So uh, Marie, would you like to give your, your introduction for a few minutes? Oh, I'm so sorry, everybody. And I'm so sorry that this then sort of feels slightly disjointed. So I was going to sort of set the scene and then we were going to do our deep dive. So this might be a bit curious. So I'll try and uh, adjust. And apologies. I've got a new laptop and um, for some reason it just didn't want to load Zoom. So I had to do some software downloads and goodness knows what. But um, look, great to see everybody um, as, as as always. And and I guess just a thank you um, to those uh, who have been so kind of closely 
um, linked to kind of our community's uh, work and kind of agenda kind of more more broadly and obviously thanks for those kind of contributions already into James's item which I caught the back end of um, in relation to sort of being interested in that and wanting to kind of uh, get behind it. Um, Asaba, could you do me a favour? I can't share my screen either, which is slightly tricky. Um, would you be able to just share my kind of couple of really quick kind of intro slides? Um, if that might be possible or somebody on the call that might have access to them. Tricky, I'll carry on. Um, and I guess just, just to sort of set the scene uh, around this, um, I, I completely sort of recognise that some of you gave me some real sort of challenge in the early days around the council council being quite late to the party around some of our kind of community thinking and I hope that from some of the things that James has said and some of the things you're going to hear from Sue and colleagues in a moment that you might reflect now that we've been sort of firmly uh, turning up to parties and hopefully also bringing something to um, the party as well. And, while you kind of think about whether that's party rings, jelly or ice cream or something else. Um, I, I just wanted to sort of say a few words on a, on a few bits that we've kind of been working on. Um, I can't see the slides, so I'll carry on and I'll share them kind of afterwards. I guess sort of as a, um, a snapshot of the sort of the story so far, and James has sort of touched on an element of that, I guess just to pick out a few elements um, uh, around what's changed. So since we last sort of talked as a kind of a group, I guess firstly, we've been investing in and, and really looking to improve community infrastructure. And that includes things like our libraries transformation programme that I know Sue and colleagues will talk about in due course. It also includes things like uh, your fund Surrey and some other small uh, elements uh, uh, as well. We've also been engaging and collaborating locally and very differently across the county, uh, not just through sort of the original, uh, through this, uh, oh thank you my love very much indeed. Could I have slide two? Thank you. Um, we've been working in places and neighbourhoods with other organisations, importantly as well alongside residents, so not all of this is just coming through the community link officers, we've also been doing that work kind of already. Um, in East Surrey, for example, some of you will know we've been part of and supporting Gillian Oro with their Growing Health Together work. In places like North Leatherhead, we've been bringing stakeholders and residents together about what matters locally, supporting conversations about and action around kind of their ideas about green opportunities, bank shutting, flooding, you name it, um, in, in, in that regard. Um, and we've also been, uh, you'll see at the bottom there, we've been adapting uh, key roles to become kind of more locally focused and uh, the introduction of community link officers, local area coordinators that James talked about, um, who, you know, very much um, on the local area coordinator side are there to support individuals to help them to achieve a good life. And it's been really Sorry, great. Sorry, Marie, we're still not seeing, oh. well, I'm not seeing the slide too. So you're okay. talking to a slide that I can't see. We're seeing the front slide still, I okay. think. And I can't see yeah, that. So thank you, Kate. Mine's jammed. Sorry, uh, it's stuck on slide one. Sorry. No worry at all. And I can't see the slide. So goodness me, what <laughs> what, a conco what a concoction of kind of craziness this morning. Anyway, um, maybe it will shift in just a moment. Um, so I, I guess just to say thank you to colleagues on the call who um, have supported many of those kind of initiatives and you know we've been working really closely with, um, I know a number of people on this call have been really active in our recruitment of some fantastic people for local area coordination for example um, and it's been really great to see residents themselves um, engaged in those uh, interviews and indeed the kind of the selection as, as well. Um, just a, a reminder as well around our health and wellbeing board commitments um, to enhance collaboration with communities and community led action in, in 21 key neighbourhoods across the county. Um, again, we've started that work in different ways in different places and numerous people on the call and beyond have been kind of engaged in that. Um, we have a range of kind of listening and engagement work going on with Woking Borough Council, wider partners in Shearwater as an example. It's been really wonderful to see uh, a great kind of local team coming together and emerging there and working kind of really well um, and interestingly Mark and I took uh, the uh, an internal Surrey County Council kind of communities uh, board uh, on the road to Merston last week for a bit of a walkabout um, and to really think with Rygate and Bunstead colleagues about sort of next steps about how we might move some of the work there um, forward kind of locally and there's a particular small area in Merston with some particular uh, challenges where there uh, is a plan to take 
take a really open engaged approach holding our barbecue in September talking to people about what life's really like for them and what they'd like to focus on to make it even better which feels really uh, exciting and I was also really delighted to hear and some of you might know this on the call already but Alice the community development lead in Merston who we are co-funding with Rygate and Banstead is planning with young people in the area to make some short films about what it's like to live in Merston. Uh, and if Select, I don't know if Select's on the call today, but Select Shepherdson and others know I'm really super keen that we use some of our creative methods and use our kind of arts and culture more broadly um, uh, as sort of approaches to help local people tell stories of kind of where they live, um, because that feels uh, really sort of super important. Um, I, uh, on the basis we can't share the next slide, I uh, I'm just going to pause, um, I guess, just to sort of say there's I've got something in the slides which we'll share afterwards, which just sort of starts to share how we are thinking as well internally about bringing together our thinking about how we support communities and also our kind of customer agenda rather than thinking about those separately. Um, we've been really struck um, from, uh, and certainly I have been, from being out and about recent visits engagement across the county where people have been saying, it's great, you wanna be really close to community, closer to communities and engage really differently, but actually you've also got to get the basics right and deliver on what, what you're meant to. Um, and I guess we know that trust is a real challenge with residents and we we also know that um, despite sort of many of the complex um, uh, challenges that many uh, of our residents face, things like highways and potholes are also massively important to our residents um, as, as well. So thinking about how we sort of blend those two things and after the session I'll just share with you uh, the sort of the model I guess that we have um, been setting out to, oh there it is, I can now see that, hopefully others can, fabulous. Um, so this is a bit of a model setting out how we're looking to kind of create a really strong kind of resident customer ethos that cuts through each part of the organisation and, and very much putting kind of customers at the heart of everything we do. And on the left-hand side of the diagram, really thinking about how we shape demand for services, building independence, working with partners, local communities, providing advice, information at an early stage so people can make informed choices about and what they can do for themselves. It's also about actively um, seeking opportunities to work in partnership to provide a more local joined up and connected offer in the way that I was describing previously. It moves into things like, you know, increasing digital capability, thinking about how we get things right first time, all the things that you would um, understand and expect. And I know we had a session last week with uh, Bob and others um, in, in a different mode in our select committee talking about much of this. So there's a sort of a model there kind of emerging about the way that we kind of want to work. But I guess I just wanted to just quickly reflect on a couple of examples of how this model is working with organisations on this call to really support our residents in a different way. So you see on the sort of the left hand side we've got something around optimising use of community assets um, and it's been really great to see that further to initial conversation with Lucy um, at the Brigitte Trust uh, we held our first death cafe in Hawley Library a few months ago uh, with a waiting list um, and I, I know colleagues are planning more of those which has just been a fantastic collaboration. Secondly thinking about that piece around early engagement, early help. Um, it was brilliant that um, uh, Estas uh, recently uh, did some work with our registration service, um, providing training around supporting early signs around domestic abuse, knowing what to do next. Really important given that we register 18,000 births and about 11,000 deaths every year and people have to come to us for that. So really thinking about how we complement the work of kind of other agencies when those people um, uh, show up to see us. Um, when you look across the kind of the, the, the model there, so thinking about creating a seamless digital experience, it's been brilliant to work with Site for Surrey and the Coalition for Disabled People who have introduced us to residents with lived experience, who have reviewed and challenged the content and also the navigation of our website as part of our kind of wider agenda to improve accessibility. And then I guess lastly, um, I was thinking about sort of the, the area there that's about sort of managed customer contact. And I was thinking about the work that our customer services team have done in partnership with the CAB and well, for rights unit to set up the welfare line for those struggling uh, as part of the cost of living crisis. So I guess just 
some essence there of how it feels as though there's really great collaborations going on to really bring this kind of uh, model to life uh, kind of more, more broadly um, and it's been great to see those sort of um, relationships um, uh, develop as uh, as the last sort of year or two, two have gone on um, I was going to say something about local care and coordination but I'm, I'm actually not going to and I'm going to send that separately which is a story um, from some of our early work around local area coordination that I think some of you uh, will really enjoy but I'll circulate that after the session so that's just an overview and I know we've gone from James to me but I'm now going to hand over to kind of library's colleagues and I suggest then we'll come back at the end for sort of any collective questions or indeed and indeed to sort of open it up I know Sabra and I were talking about how to sort of open up a sort of a wider discussion around this so I wonder whether I might ask Sue and Simon and Co to jump in here thank you thanks Mary. So um, th thank you, Marie. Um, just a couple of introductions first. Um, um, I'm Susan Wills and I am the Assistant Director for um, Arts, Libraries, Culture um, and also Active Surrey. And I have Katie Kinnear and Simon Harding from the Libraries team with me today. And um, we're just going to just, I'm just going to run through the first couple of slides first before I hand over to Simon. So just to really explain our first slide, we've been using this um, Carnegie model to talk about what a modern library service um, should be and, and actually we are in Surrey. And it's very much the library as the social hub, the cultural center, the learning hub and the economic enabler. And you'll see tucked in that slide are various parts that are kind of, if you like, add up to this, this lovely diagram. Um, but this is very much modern libraries um, on one side of A4, really easy to actually um, to get your head around and, and understand what we're, what we're working to. And next slide, please. And then also just to talk um, just very briefly about the scale of the service, because often when we talk about libraries in Surrey, um, I just want to really just be really um, clear about actually how big the service is. And, and that actually means then we're in the heart of every single community. So we've got 52 libraries and, and 10 of those are actually run by our community partners. Um, we have nearly 5 million items or 5 million books and items that are borrowed um, every year. Um, you can see we've got uh, over 300,000 registered borrowers that are using the service across Surrey. Um, we obviously have um, free computer use, free um, Wi-Fi, and we've also got um, 1,500 volunteers, which we're very lucky to have. Um, we're also, um, and I'm very proud, proud to say this, we're actually now the second busiest library service in the country, which is lovely. And we're also using social media to really spread the word about our libraries and reading and literacy. And we've now got over a million impressions on Twitter. So that gives you an idea about the sort of the scale of the business. And now I'm going to hand over to Simon um, to, to pick up from where I've left off. Thanks, Sue. So um, just some of the key headlines really on this slide of, over, the, over the last year or so. So as Sue mentioned, we're uh, the second busiest library service in England over the last uh, sort of 12 months in terms of the national reporting. And um, this really in part, to, um, due in part to the kind of service we provided during the during the pandemic and sort of building back after that and providing a lot of key services to everyone. Um, we've also recently completed um, a survey with um, some of our users and um, uh, we had 97% uh, customer satisfaction within that overall. Um, but one of the key things from that was that 62% of our residents said that the libraries helped reduce their feelings of loneliness and social isolation, which is really important for us in terms of providing um, a safe neutral space for people to meet um, and be part of their community which is really critical. Um, should, we, should we move on uh, Katie? So um, a big part of our journey in transforming the service has been our transformation program uh, which started in 2019 and has been based on our uh, library strategy about increasing the impact of the service while reducing costs and this has seen a number of sort of interweaving strands in terms of a, a works program and it's really been about taking a place-based approach to working with communities um, thinking about that Carnegie model and our service offer which sort of provides our core framework and then balancing the different approaches uh, to different parts of that Carnegie model in different parts of the county and that's a ongoing process that we're undertaking through sort of co-design and talking to people uh, which I'll talk a bit about more in a minute. We're also looking to transform our, our library buildings um, and we've got an ambitious uh, property program which we're working to which I'll um, mention a bit more detail as well. Um, but over the last couple of years we've done a lot of workforce uh, development to 
uh, reshape the workforce in terms of some of the skills, um, making them fit to deliver the service offer that we want to do, to be able to support that co-design approach uh, and increase volunteering opportunities, and also providing the infrastructure within the spaces to be able to, to do that. So updating our IT, uh, we've joined the Libraries Consortium, which means we share our stock and some of our services with the London Boroughs and Essex. So Surrey residents now have access to over 9 million items, which they can get through their library card. Um, and we've been developing partnerships throughout this time as well with people like the British Library and the Arts Council and the Career Service to, to be able to kind of really kind of deliver a, a wider and deeper service. So following the um, some of the work we've done with our workforce and uh, the IT, we're really looking now at what our library spaces can look like and feel like to be able to provide a really kind of up-to-date modern service. And this picture on the screen is Hawley Library, which is the last library we uh, refurbished a few years ago. But now we're kind of um, uh, sort of embarking on a really kind of ambitious programme to update, update the rest, starting with some of the key libraries. And what we really want is our library spaces to be modern and flexible and to be able to deliver the vision that we have in terms of that Carnegie model and really be able to offer that social space, the cultural space, to be able to... Um, um, enable people to learn um, and to really support the economic agenda and the skills agenda and so we want the mix of the kind of the core things like the book borrowing but also event spaces um, spaces where people can kind of uh, meet and have like one-to-one -one spaces um, and um, emphasize the libraries as that safe trusted space and as anchors of the high street which really provide that place where people can come together and, and get a multitude of um, different answers to questions and information or um, enjoy themselves. Um, so as I mentioned, we've got this uh, big programme of property works and um, in November 21, we uh, went to Cabinet and got approval for um, some capital funding, which is about £34 million over five years. And so we're now starting with our five significant um, key projects, which are Red Hill, Staines, Guildford, Woking and Epsom. Um, and as part of this work, we took a, we took a look at all of the different um, libraries across the estate and thought about where we could deliver significant impact first. And so these are some of our key towns clearly across the county. And so that's where we're looking at first because they really do deliver um, a lot of the business, but also that full range of that Carnegie model. And so this is um, where we're kind of looking at. And so over the next sort of two to three years, all of those um, uh, will come to, come to fruition, but also supporting that there will be more uh, minor works to be able to improve flexibility across a range of libraries to prevent be able to enable us to provide a wider range of events and activities um, and to support the community coming together. Um, you want to move forward and so underpinning that approach and some of that design work is that co-design um, journey and ethos that I, I mentioned and so we've been working on this since the strategy was approved and um, really in line with um, some of the stuff that James described earlier and some uh, things that Marie was talking about uh, about as well. It's also about talking to our communities, understanding what they want, um, but also using data and evidence to drive some of that engagement as well. So uh, we did analysis as part of our strategy to understand um, some of the, uh, the reach of our libraries in terms of um, the kind of residents who use them and the populations we could reach, but also thinking about um, the skills in the area, the health indicators in the area, um, and the age and demographics of the area so that um, we can now train our staff and we've been training our managers and our staff to be able to then go out and speak to partners and speak to communities about uh, what they what they want informed about that data to be able to then deliver real change to the way the service operates and so what we're looking at is things like how the service offer can be tailored as I mentioned in line with that Carnegie model within each different community but also how the library design of some of the um, works that we do and the refurbishments that we do can be informed by the residents uh, in their in their local areas. So we have started already in places like Staines and Red Hill, um, talking to residents, talking to partners, um, but we're going to be doing a lot more of that over the coming months um, and years to really create an ongoing step change in the way we operate um, and, and sort of really putting um, the kind of the emphasis on how we can work with people to, to shape how we go on an ongoing basis to really provide uh, relevant services to people and, and maximise the use of our, our buildings. 
So supporting uh, that work, the co-design work, and also the um, the property work is is open access. And open access is a uh, technology-based system which allows us to open for longer without the need for increasing staffing. Um, and that's a, a mature system similar to the systems that are used in things like gyms and uh, universities. Um, and that enables us to use a library card to control things like access to the building, but also um, the system allows for things like CCTV, self-service machines, the PCs all to go on. Um, and that's really about us increasing um, accessibility um, and enable our libraries to be used outside of you know, your nine to five typical use. So we can look at early mornings, evenings, weekend usage. Um, so we've got um, a, a cabinet paper going in July, um, um, and then we're looking to bring that into 13 libraries initially, uh, starting at the end of the year. Um, and that will really help to not only allow us to do uh, the core library offer, um, but also increase community use in those buildings and allow community groups to use libraries um, outside of um, normal opening hours. Um, and so with that, I think I'm gonna, is it now to hand over to Katie? Yes, and I, I'm conscious that we're coming towards the end of our 10 minutes, so I will uh, speak quickly but clearly and uh, let you read um, some of the detail on these slides um, at your leisure afterwards. But um, libraries, um, we feel, have a really key role to play in the prevention agenda. We're often the first point of contact in a community for um, someone um, interacting with the council. Um, we're often the only service that someone sees in their whole day. So. Um, we have um, a huge impact on that prevention agenda um, and also in terms of health and well-being of communities, their economic recovery, their cultural recovery and their kind of learning and skills. And you can see here some of the things that we do in our service um, that tackle some of these different areas. Um, and I'll just come on now to talk about a couple of the projects in a little bit more detail, um, except I can't move the slide forward. Here we go. Um, so we're working on um, quite a large project at the moment, which is Arts Council funded with Farnham Maltings, which is um, designed to test the use of library spaces as cultural, um, cultural experiences, really. So we've, um, there's several strands to that work. Um, we've had um, a few strands that have happened already. You can see some photos here from the Anarchist Mobile Library, which is an interactive theatre show for families that toured around libraries last year. Um, we have had I Am Bird, which is really immersive theatre, come to the library, listen to an audio track and discover the artwork, which is hidden in books on the library shelves. Um, and that is designed to get families looking at and experience culture in a place where maybe they don't normally experience culture. Um, we've got these great um, super spies, um, the book club for super spies, where you can go on an activity around the library, solving the clues as a family. Um, some great make do amend workshops and recently we've just had our Surrey Artist Open Studio Young Artist um, in Residence um, program and we've had artists in libraries like Guildford um, who wouldn't normally be able to join in with Surrey Artist Open Studios because they don't have um, houses where they can invite people in, they might be in student accommodation um, and so they've been exhibiting in libraries and those have been really really useful because now some of those artists have now gone on to um, secure residencies um, with Turner Contemporary down in Margate um, and um, other um, exhibitions um, and even featuring on some national television shows. So um, that's really um, a great outcome from that. They wouldn't have that exposure otherwise. Um, we've also working in collaboration with um, Active Surrey on um, a Healthy Libraries, Active Libraries program. Um, and this is funding a um, uh, project officer for um, a two year period and we've started with lending out activity monitors in libraries so people can come in, they can get an activity monitor, they can uh, monitor their exercise and the aim is to encourage people to take more exercise um, and borrow devices that maybe they couldn't um, access those devices otherwise. We're working at the moment in delivering those from Woking and from Lansdowne Libraries. We've also had some great wriggle and scribble playgrounds um, and art workshops in collaboration with Surrey Arts. Um, and these have been going on in libraries and really aim to kind of look at families and increasing their well-being in terms of movement and activity. And you can see some of the great pictures um, here and some of the great comments that we've had. And this is really using those libraries and those community spaces to, to develop projects um, for the community um, with other services. And finally, this is a kind of 
list of a few of the other projects that we're working on at the moment. So we've got a Gypsy Roma Travel Literacy Project, which is aiming to increase literacy amongst the, the GRT community. We have a summer reading challenge pilot. We do that every year in libraries. We have a summer reading challenge. But this year, we're working exclusively with 14 schools in mainly deprived areas in Surrey. Um, and you can see on here, um, we've also got a digital welfare project. We're doing community outreach to the old dean, a book start extension, um, and we're looking at Reading Friends and Reading Sparks, which aims to tackle loneliness and also to promote um, science and technology. So that's the end of our presentation. <laughs> Slightly over on apologies for that, but there's lots of information in there and we're happy to take any questions in chat too. Brilliant, thank you. Um, can I suggest that we spend a couple of minutes on, on questions, but then I understand uh, there are some questions that you would like us to answer that we're going to take out of the breakout rooms. Uh, so before we move to that, then, uh, any questions for Marie about her introduction and or for the libraries? Uh, Kate? Yeah, I love the, the library shift. Um, I think really exciting, it, you know, mu much needed. I think trying to maintain a load of buildings so that people could go and borrow books was just just clearly not sustainable. <laughs> um, uh, at the same time, you know, I'm of the generation showing my age, obviously, where, um, you know, you walk into libraries and they're meant to be silent. Um, and 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 I can see that there's a quite a big cultural shift needed here. And I just have a slight anxiety about some of our older members across Surrey and some of our younger members sort of, you know, clashing over this where it gives an opportunity where, you know, maybe older people say, oh, those young people, you know, they're up to no good again. They're, they're talking in our libraries type thing. And I know I'm stereotyping a bit, but I just I'm just wondering what you're going to what you're doing to sort of bring along, you know, and, yeah the cultural shift piece piece related to this so that people walk into libraries and aren't shocked if there's lots of noise going on. I'll jump in, um, Kate, if that's okay. And yeah. um, Simon and Katie, please add it. So I think um, this is very much about creating a modern library service that we, we think working with the residents that actually Surrey deserves, but this is also very much part of what libraries, the good libraries look like in this country. And, and it's very much about um, um, also about um, what we've also found is older people, for example, like interacting with children, young people. There's something about generations in our communities coming together in this space and actually working together as well. So Katie sort of mentioned the make, do and mend and older people loved working with the younger people because older people also love showing you things. So the older people were showing the, young, the younger children, you know, about sewing techniques and things like that. And then you have conversations about um, different kind of experiences and so on. So I think it's also very much about um, bringing people together. Libraries are actually um, pretty good spaces. They're very flexible spaces. So you can actually have a reading group in one side of the library and you can have a rhyme time in another side of the library. And in another part of the library, you can have um, people studying as well. Um, so it's very much that flexible space and very much those space working very hard. But you're also right. Um, in a modern library, about half of the business will come through the book lending and people borrowing books. But the other half is all of the um, other activities that actually promote the book stock. And actually, that's part of the legislation as well. People think of libraries are a statutory service, but people think of that as mainly book lending. What they don't realise as well is we actually are required by law to have fun. We are required to promote the library service and have lots of fun in libraries and actually um, celebrate all the lovely things about libraries. So um, it's not very often you have legislation that requires you to have fun. Um, but that's exactly what we're doing. So we're, we're modernising. We're using the Carnegie diagram to describe that as well. So, we're, but we're very aware of that, um, and and just helping communities have the kind of work together and actually um, sort of be a bit of the glue. Because the lovely thing about libraries, Kate, as you will know, is um, li everybody loves libraries and everybody knows, you know, everybody wants to use the library, and that's why we're the second busiest library service in the country. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I just want to be clear. I'm absolutely supportive of this. It's not that I'm not, and I certainly like a bit of fun. But but it, it's just it's just you know I could just see see that for some people it could be challenging. But anyway, thank, thank you very much for your for your answers too. Right. Uh, thank you, uh, Katie. Yeah, I was just going to chip in and say you know one of the things with libraries is it, it, they are spaces for everyone, and we do need to be able to cater for all that whole range from from you know birth to 120. Um, and so as we're designing libraries, they will, we will be taking into account um, quiet zones, um, meeting rooms where maybe people could go if they want to have quiet study, um, having activities at different times. And when we have an, a quiet period in the morning, 
or we have a, a, a time when the lights are dimmed and someone who has autism can come into the library. So we're making our libraries autism, dementia and dyslexia friendly and really making sure that in our design, we're taking into account that wide range of needs, which sometimes is often very difficult because we don't just have one target audience, we have everyone. Um, so um, yes, yeah, so there will be spaces for all in our new library. Thank you, Katie. Uh, Eloise? Yeah, I just, um, uh, your, I think the library team will may remember that I was very enthusiastic about the idea of creating a hub in Bookham uh, uh, a while back and it was a bit too early maybe in the programme, but obviously all this is very much in, in line with what, what we were suggesting then and I know very well how it works from Hampshire so I can reassure um, Kate that um, actually um, if people don't mind putting noise in libraries when there's this coffee <laughs> and they can, they can have a happy social time while they're there. Um, anyway, my question is of course inevitably as I run the Grain Centre, um, will you provide a possibility as, as part of your community remit um, job opportunities and uh, volunteering uh, opportunities for people with um, disabilities of all kinds but obviously I'm keen to know about learning disabilities um, because I think that's worked in other places and, 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 and it seems to be a lovely specific systematic kind of job or it could be it could be work, um, chunked into systematic um, tasks uh, with maybe a bit of help for a personal assistant that would work really well and, and it'd be lovely another lovely, lovely link with the community and I think actually we'd raise some big smiles of your customers. If I just come back on that very briefly Elise, um, you, you're absolutely right and that is what we're working to but I also think it's worth just saying the most obvious we, we are still recovering from the pandemic so um, all the way through the pandemic, we've been building the library service and you can see the slides really celebrate that story. And we've also um, done a restructure for the workforce and so we've got the right skills in place, but we've also, for example, been building up the apprentices offer. So we've been able to offer young people apprenticeships in libraries as part of that employment. Um, the, next, the next part of all of that is, is we're now developing a much more inclusive and diverse workforce. And that obviously includes people with all of the abilities and we've got some we're beginning to to, to, to actually recruit people to actually um change the diverse increase the diversity of our workforce so very much on our agenda we're on the start of that journey please be reassured i've not forgotten that conversation because that is something that for me is a bit of a north star that i hold very dear and as i say we're on that journey i, I won't talk about individual people because that wouldn't be right but we actually beginning to see that diversity coming into the service Yes, we've got a lot more to do, um, and we've also got to kind of um, build build that build that work as well. And that's why we keep talking about the volunteering in libraries because what we're finding is as well as young people, for example, are volunteering with us for the summer reading challenge. They're realising that it's actually a job for them. So there's a bit of a pipeline going on, which is if I can catch you young, and you can I can keep you for life, kind of stuff. Um, then that's my perfect that's my perfect world. So the Summer Reading Challenge Young Volunteers, um, and we're getting more of those in Duke of Edinburgh, and so we're really spreading the message now that we really want a whole range of different people in our work. Because the more we do that, the better the service will be. And I've worked in places like Lambeth and Cambridgeshire, and the more diverse you have as a workforce, the better and better the service becomes. So Eloise, please, that is very, something very dear to our hearts, and that's what we're on our journey, and we've started it, but we've got a hell of a lot more to do, if I was honest with you. Uh, thanks, Sue. Thanks, everyone, for the questions. Um, I'm going to use abuse uh, chair's privilege again by asking another question. Is the library services amazing? My family are in there all the time. I won't mention that I'm a Kindle kind of guy, though. Um, but what I am interested in is what about those who can't access the libraries easily? I'm thinking rural communities, particularly socially isolated rural communities. What provision are you putting in place for people in that situation? So I'll just I'll just uh, start to reply to that and bring Simon and Katie in as well to chip in. So the thing I'd like to talk about, Jason, because we don't talk about it enough, is um, before we talk about the libraries, we also have a home library service. So we have something like 350 people we actually visit in their home every three weeks or so with a volunteer, with a selection of books and have a chat because a chat and a book goes a long way. Um, and that service is really capable of expanding. And, and that, that home library service doesn't just work with older people in the community that are not, for whatever reason, are not able to leave the homes. But we're also working with the schools now and with our education colleagues to start talking about how we can expand that service for children, young people who, for whatever reason, are not able to leave their homes. So we've got that part of the service. Um, we've also got 52 libraries, and that actually means our reach into those communities is pretty good. 
in terms of this pretty much a light not i'm not exactly saying a library on every doorstep but we're not too far from that in Surrey. we're very very lucky that we've actually got all of that but also katie in the slides referenced the old dean for example and where we've got areas of real need we're having conversations there with the communities to actually say okay how can we work with you to actually create i call it if i was honest with you like a pop-up library offer what does that look like and katie as i say um can well we can send some information if you like after this call about the work we're doing with old dean so something about home library services coming to you visit in your own home something about the library buildings the 52 of them in there and then something about pop-up library offer and what that looks like and then the fourth thing i would just add jason but it's not a replacement it's an add is we've also got things like ebooks and we've obviously got um, reference materials and things like that that you can access online and we've also and I can't think how many events we've actually put online now because the pandemic has really helped us to really um, push the online stuff. So if you're a mum, for example, with very young children, you can't get out of the house. I know when my daughter was younger, it was, like a, it was an effort to even get, get out of the door. Um, you can still access some of those story times and things like that online. So a really, really sort of multi-thing offer. Uh, now, Katie and someone, if I missed anything here, because it's like having a chocolate box, like a big chocolate box, a different selection <laughs> box, with lots of different goodies in it. What have I missed? I, th I think you've covered that really well so actually because i was going to think okay we can add the digital we can add the uh, <laughs> stuff in the old dean and you've covered it all so no yeah. well done. Right. Well, the other thing i was going to add james is you need to um sack the kindle i think and you need to go on to a different android product so you can access our ebooks because we have a, such a huge range on there and e-magazines and e-newspapers so uh, uh, yeah. that's going to be a conversation <laughs> for another day, I think. Uh, we, we do need to move on. And uh, we wanted to make this session a bit uh, interactive and get feedback uh, from everyone here. So I'm going to hand over to Marie, who's going to ask you a question. And then we're going to put ourselves into breakout rooms to discuss that question. So Marie, over to you. Thanks, Jason. I'm actually just going to ask Saba to jump in, if if, if I may, because we were collaborating around, around this, just to sort of get this, the juices going. But just, I guess, thank you for the... Um, engagement on those kind of topics and the join-ups that are being made up in the chat as well, which has been really fantastic. So thank you. Saba, will you just lead us to the question that we posed? Thank you. Oh, I will do. Um, so it was about... Only because I can't see it. That's okay. I'm frozen it, on Zoom. It's okay. It was, it was from what colleagues have spoken about, what is in these areas of work that can support you and your work, how can you support it too? What can you bring and what can we collaborate on? So to really think about what you've heard, what you take away from it, what, where we can really join up and work together and what things are you excited about? What more would you like to see? So just a little breakout to talk about that. Great. And if we can take, uh, let me think, uh, about... Um, seven minutes, seven, eight minutes, it will be a quick chat. Uh, I'm going to put you randomly into breakout rooms, so I hope you don't end up with people you know only, but uh, we'll bring you back in at about 10 past uh, 11. So um, uh, thanks everyone. The, the allocating to rooms randomly threw up a couple of interesting quirks, like the poor room with only two people in it, but generally I hope it worked. Um, so what would be quite useful to do is just five minutes just if any group what would what be really great if all the groups could do is um either by email to louisa or even in just the chat here just summarize the key points of the conversation that you had but it would be really useful to hear from some of you if you've got anything really exciting that you think is worth sharing so with a certain sense of trepidation and dread i'll throw the floor open to everybody Who's going to be brave and put their head above the parapet? I think Fiamma was going to feedback for our group. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I'm very ready. Uh, hi, hi, Jason. Um, yeah, we, we well, uh, I guess we started the conversation off with me talking about um, our experience here at your sanctuary, um, supporting survivors of domestic abuse and thinking about um, how survivors really are, uh, are every one of us uh, can be and a part of all sorts of different groups and communities and that we as, as organisations have moved away from the idea that we're the specialists and we can do everything and are moving much more toward um, people, whatever, 
um, domestic abuse survivors or have any other issues really need to be supported in the way that is most comfortable and accessible for them where they most need it and therefore these new initiatives around libraries and community links really helps to facilitate that and um, uh, helps, yeah, all, 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 all those people, so not just survivors of domestic abuse, to really get the support they need delivered in the way that they, that they need it. And that you save the specialist support maybe for those people for whom those things might not be enough, but then they move back out to those communities once, once they've had enough of the specialist service. Um, and Kate's point also about if everything is held by one agency, how do you transition those people back out to the community? So if I think about a women's refuge, if we hold the women there and they don't access faith groups and libraries and schools and all the rest of it, what happens when they go back out to the community? They're isolated again. So this feeling of community and link with the parts of the community that can really support them, uh, we were all very in favour of and... Um, think should grow so I think that's everything was that right Saba did I put that right cool <laughs> thank you thank you uh, would any of the other rooms like to feedback in other words beat that be competitive hmm. shall I so, hi um so yeah we we started with us with being very excited about the community link officers which is great news uh, and then we were talking about volunteering opportunities and how it, it would be good to get more young people volunteering and particularly with a with a view to the journey to their careers and the, them considering the charity sector as a career opportunity and that perhaps that not many of them are considering the charity they think that maybe charity Volunteering is just volunteering in a charity shop, as opposed to, um, you know, Smith is saying that, that, that they would be interested. They've got lots of volunteering opportunities. So I think there is a piece around how do we get more young people volunteering within the charity sector? Um, and particularly, we could tap in with the DOV um, because there's lots of opportunity. I was saying with my, my daughter, when she was doing DOV, I, I've struggled to find volunteering opportunities. And it's about making sure that they're aware of all the opportunities that are out there. Lovely, thank you. Uh, so I'm a little bit distracted by uh, Lynn. We're about to move into your item. Do you want to do it today or do you want to postpone it? Sorry, Jason, just coming back in. I think I'll hold it till the next session if that's okay with you, just so that it's not rushed through. It's not okay. a problem. Yeah, thank fine. you. Thanks. Uh, yes, um, I, I've slightly let the conversation overrun a little bit because it's been quite interesting and very, very useful. And poor Lynn has um, has borne the brunt of that. But uh, we'll have Lynn talking about the uh, mental health leveling up work uh, in the August meeting, which gives us another couple of meetings. So a uh, couple, couple of minutes, rather. So, Katie, you put a summary of your conversation in chat there. It'd be nice to hear a little bit more. Yeah, so... Um... Well, essentially what I said there, we were talking, uh, we had a group of four, so I uh, included me, so it's quite nice to, to have that chat. Um, and um, we were talking about, um, you know, libraries being that trusted place and actually how could organisations get information out to libraries or, um, and uh, I guess, raise awareness for their organisation or the things that they work on. Um, and I would say um, we did some great stuff around um, Carers Week with the care practitioners um, coming into libraries and signposting the service they offer so um, if anyone wants to have a stall in the library have banners up get leaflets we can obviously distribute that to all of our libraries because they are quite often the first point someone thinks I'll come for information um, and that also went into conversations around um, at some work that Siobhan was doing um, to upskill some of our library staff on adult social care so that they can instead of people and this also feeds into our customer service file that we're doing so instead of people being turned away because they can't get that information, the staff have that knowledge to be able to say, you need to go here or I can help you with X or I can do that. So um, we were talking about um, really that, I guess, that trusted role of the librarian and, and that signposting that they can do um, and the opening hours, which I think is quite handy for that kind of thing. Um, and then we talked a little bit about um, actually about green agenda and about wildflowering and the work that we're doing on the on greener futures to make our, our buildings net carbon zero and really having that big impact in communities because we have so many library buildings and a lot of them are freehold so it was a quite wide-ranging discussion but that's kind of summarised the main point. Excellent, 
Excellent. That's brilliant. Thanks, Katie. And there's another few uh, few people have popped in some notes into the chat, and we'll make sure the libraries team get those. Uh, so thank you very much for that. I think uh, we probably do want to move on, though. Um, and uh, next on the agenda is just uh, the usual chance for market sector partners, or anybody, actually. It's more than just market sector. Uh, to give us any updates they have, any requests for help, anything they think they would like the group to know. So again, I'll throw the floor open for that. So does anyone have anything they'd like to bring up? No, we're all shy today. Oh, sorry, Eloise, carry on. Sorry, I'm just really doing it to fill, <laughs> to fill the gap. I know you're involved, Jason. Um, so yesterday, some, all of us got um, emails from the Lord Lieutenant's uh, office uh, inviting us to, it's not a gathering for the charitable sector, the charity sector. Um, I'm, I'm feeling, as I said, my work breakout group is now quite overloved at the minute. There are so many um, groups now being created for um, uh, um, the third sector or whatever you want to call us. Do you, you're a bit involved in that, Jason, or at least one of your staff is. is, is could, you, could you explain a bit more what that might be trying to achieve over and above all the other conversations that are being had by the charities at the moment? Sorry, uh, Eloise, I'm trying to do two things at once. Are you talking about the left tendency? Oh, group? Jason, you're a man. You should never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I said that implication based on gender, Eloise. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I only said it because I'm full of, in, in a room full of people who understand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I do the equality of gender. Uh, did you, do you want me to say it all again or just a very short version of it? That's, that's, that's fine. I, I've picked up on it. The, the Lord left tendency, basically, is where we're at. So, well, what's happening? Yeah. Why, is he, why does he want to love us so much suddenly? Well, the Lord Lieutenant provides uh, is um, involved in an awful lot of charities uh, across the county, and the, the Office of the Lieutenancy supports a lot more. They've certainly been very active in the charity sector over the last uh, few months, uh, congratulating people and supporting them on their uh, work during the pandemic. And I think what, uh, what the Lord Lieutenant's very keen to do is to make sure there's a networking opportunity for the organisations that they've supported. Uh, to get together and uh, have conversations. And they're also interested in what more the left tenancy can do to support the voluntary sector across Surrey. So yes, it's another example of us being loved and that's fantastic. Um, I don't think there's a significant overlap in what we're doing and the opportunity for people to engage with the left tenancy will help their man to help the, the left tenancy as well. So, so that's basically it. And I think I would always prefer to have more interaction, more engagement than less. Does that help? Yes, I suppose I'm just thinking there's, you know, some of the charities don't, don't have an awful lot of staff to go around and, and being yeah. in, like we had a meeting yesterday, a meeting today, that one's kind of, I, I love it. I'm not going to wait and say no to hobnobbing with the Lord Lieutenant. That's a very lovely chat, but, yeah. um, and, 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 you know, does lots of good work. But it's just, I, I guess, if you've got to pick and choose a bit, you know, is, is that going to be a regular one? Is it just a one off? You know, it, it, there wasn't very much information, I suppose, that came with it. So I wondered if you could add anything to it but you have so sorry youth focus and sorry community action are part of the uh, charity group that the lord lieutenants put together and i happen to be on that group as well mm -hmm. so uh, firstly there was a survey of charities so part of the uh, agenda for the meeting is to feedback on that survey then as jason rightly said it's a networking opportunity and in answer to your question um, it's a choice whether you go or not, but um, I, I, there aren't plans to have a regular meeting in that way. It's a way of feeding back to the people that fed into the survey to think about how the left tenancy can support the charity sector and to act as a, um, uh, a networking opportunity. So that's basically what, what, that, what that invitation was. And there was a lot of debate about holding it next to uh, Jason's event. And the view was that it doesn't clash, as you've just said, Jason. Uh, thanks, John. That's really, really helpful. And it also provides a perfect segue into my little bit of a sector update, as you might have heard there. So we've got our first face-to-face -face annual conference since pre-COVID. Uh, and uh, we're looking forward to welcoming as many people as possible to Christchurch in Woking uh, for a session with, uh, we have various national voluntary sector leaders, such as Sarah Biber from NCVO, Paul Streets from the Lloyds Foundation, uh, to talk about how things have gone over the last few years, plan for the next few years, and we'll have an awful lot of really good workshops around uh, marketing, fundraising, all those kind of things. I'll stick a link to the um, uh, to the information and the sign-up sheet on the chat there, so it would be fantastic to welcome as many of you there as possible. It would be lovely to see you all in three dimensions. 
Uh, on that note, uh, I think we can probably close the meeting. There's a lot of really good comments coming in chat for potential future meetings and also uh, uh, quick updates in there. So that's great. So the chat transcript will go out with the notes. So all remains to say is thank you very much for your time and uh, I'll see you all soon.